Hello. This video is a follow-up to my earlier tutorial where I showed a one-minute scalping strategy from TradePro and how to code that in MQL4. I've had a number of requests to show how to convert that to MQL5. Now, if you haven't seen the earlier video, you probably should because I explain everything in detail in terms of what the code is doing and I also reference the original strategy in that earlier video and I'll leave a link to the MetaTrader 4 video in the description. All I'm going to be showing today is how to convert that existing code to MetaTrader 5 so I'm not going to be going through the entire code that I'm writing today just the changes for MetaTrader 5. So I have the MetaTrader 5 editor open now uh, here is the M1 scalper MQ4 that I created earlier I'm just going to open that and then save it as MQ5 All right, so now it's m1scalper.nq5, and then I'll go through and make the changes to make this work under MetaTrader 5. The inputs remain the same. Uh, the skip trade I showed in the last video, that won't be changing, but MetaTrader 5 handles indicators differently to MetaTrader 4. I need handles to those indicators and a buffer to hold the data from the indicators. So here I've created handles for each of the three indicators, and the thing that makes an indicator different is the inputs to it. So each of these fast, mid and slow, they're the moving average indicators and they are each different because they have a different number of periods for the moving average. And the fractal indicator is obviously different because it's just a fractal indicator. And here is the buffer. I need a buffer to get the data out from those indicators, but I don't need a separate buffer for each indicator because I can reuse this one. In some cases, you will need a separate buffer for each if you're holding the data in that buffer, but I can reuse this array for each of these four indicators. And the next thing I have here is this hash include statement with the angle brackets, trade slash trade.mqh. This is a file that's included with MetaTrader 5 and it provides a class called ctrade and that just makes trading operations easier. I could do the basics of the trading operations, but it's much easier to use this class where MetaTrader have wrapped up a lot of the functions that I need to call. So I include that file, that gives me access to a class name called ctrade, and then I'm immediately declaring a variable of type ctrade, and I'm just calling my variable trade. So that gives me an object of type ctrade that I can use. Notice that this is not a pointer. So I'm not creating a pointer to an object, I'm actually creating the object, and that means I also don't need to delete the object later. And I find that very acceptable in this case because trade is really a class that has working functions rather than a class that maintains state. Now next in the onInit function, as I said, MetaTrader 5 handles indicators differently. I have these handles for the indicators. Now I need to initialize those, and I need to do that once only in the beginning. So I'm doing this in the onInit function handle fast equals and the arguments to this are very similar to the MetaTrader 4 arguments IMA for the moving average symbol with brackets gives me the chart symbol the chart period fast bars the number of moving average bars shift which is zero method and applied price and that returns a handle to an indicator that runs in the background and I'm duplicating that for the mid and the slow the only difference here is that imp mid bars or imp slow bars method and applied price, but they all take chart symbol and period. And then I also have the handle to the fractal and that uses the ifractals function. And the only two arguments to that are the symbol from the chart and the period from the chart. If any of these calls fail for some reason, then I want to exit the expert at this point. So I have a quick test here. If handle fast is equal to invalid handle or handle mid is equal to invalid handle or and so on, handle slow and handle fractal. So if any of those are an invalid handle, then I print a message failed to create the indicator handles and return in it failed and that will terminate the expert. And the next thing is this buffer that I have. I want to make sure that that buffer is in the same order as the bars on the screen so that when I refer to buffer element number zero, it matches bar number zero on the screen. And by default, that's not the case. By default, element number zero from the buffer will be the leftmost bar on the screen. So I'm just going to reverse that with the array set as series function. And I only need to do that once. Array set as series indicator buffer comma true will mean that element number zero of the indicator buffer will line up with bar number zero on the chart. And then finally, I have this trade object the trading functions in that trade object 
don't allow me to set the magic number when I place trades. That's done once on the class. And this is mainly because the concept of hedging trades was not included in the original design of MetaTrader 5. So it's been added on as a kind of bolt on later. We gotta find a way to make this fit into the hole for this. So I just do a one-time trade.set expert magic number, INP magic. And now anytime I execute a trade using this trade object, it will use that magic number. Onto the on D init function, these handles that I've created are references to background processes and those processes will take memory and resources if I don't remove them. So here in the on D init, I call indicator release for each of these handles. Moving on to the on tick, I'm still going to leave this if new bar, that doesn't change and the new bar function doesn't change. This static int current ticket in MetaTrader 4, I was holding the ticket number that I have opened, and then I can simply see if that ticket closes as a way of knowing if I have a trade open. But in MetaTrader 5, getting a position ticket number for a trade that's just been opened is more difficult. So I'm going to take a different approach. So I don't need this static int current ticket at all. Let me just paste in the code that I'm going to be using for MetaTrader 5. So in MetaTrader 5, instead of checking a specific ticket, I'm simply going to look through all of the positions that I have and see if I have a position that's open for this expert. So the loop here is for int i equals positions total minus one, while i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. So I'm counting down beginning with positions total minus one. I get the ticket number, u long ticket equals position get ticket i, but now I need to check to see if that is a position for this expert. So if not, position select by ticket, ticket. So I've got a ticket number back, but I actually need then to get the position information into memory. And if this fails, then I simply continue. And continue goes to this point, or effectively back to the beginning of the loop. And if the loop is ended, then it will simply carry on in the code. So continue is a quick way of moving from this statement to the end of the loop. The next statement, if position get string position underscore symbol is not equal to the chart symbol, continue. So if it's not the same symbol as this chart, then the position can't be from this expert because this expert's running with the chart symbol. And then the same for the magic, but in this case, position get integer position underscore magic is not equal to the input magic number. So if I found a position that passes both of these tests, because these are not equals, remember, so if it's at the wrong symbol or the wrong magic number, I simply call continue, and then it moves on here and goes back to the start of the loop again. If it passes all of those, then it must be a position for this expert running on this chart symbol, and so I just return. That means I've found one, because I don't want to trade again if there is already a trade open. And so that replaces this code that I had for MetaTrader 4, so I'll just delete that now. And the methods of getting data back, so obviously I'm not using the IMA and the I fractal. I already have the handles to those indicators. So I'm just going to add one more variable here. And I'm calling that copy bars, and that simply tells me how many bars I want to get from each of the handles. And that's just fractal bar plus one. So fractal bar is three, that's bar number three, but remember that the bars are indexed from zero. So bar number three is actually the fourth bar so I'm simply saying I want to copy fractal bar plus one bars each time I call the copy buffer, and you'll see that in a moment. I'll just push these existing statements down for a moment, and then I'll insert the first for MetaTrader 5. So just looking at the fast, so there's a statement copy buffer that takes the handle, so I'm passing in the handle to the fast. The buffer number, which is zero, because moving averages only have one buffer, so it's buffer number zero. The starting position, so I'm starting from bar number zero as well. The number of bars I want to copy, and that's why I've used this copy bars. And I'm copying that data into the indicator buffer. That returns the number of bars that have actually been copied into this buffer. So I have a test here. If copy buffer is less than copy bars, that means I didn't get enough data back. Uh, if there's an error in the copy buffer, I'll get a minus one or if there simply isn't enough data, I'll get less than my copy bars of buffer. So if I get a less than copy bars, then I'm just going to return because I can't process after that. Now, once I have that buffer, previously I had 
fast equals IMA for bar and fast F for the fractal fast coming from fractal bar. But now I have all of that data in the array. I simply have to extract it from each of the two different positions. So double fast equals indicator buffer bar and that's bar number one and double fast F equals indicator buffer fractal bar which is bar number three. So that takes care of the fast. And now I can just duplicate this for the mid and the slow. And the only difference here, copy buffer handle mid or copy buffer handle slow. And then I'm obviously putting those into the mid variable and the mid F and the slow and the slow F variables. I'll just remove these MetaTrader 4 statements because I no longer need them. So now I'm down to the fractals. The calls to get the fractals are a little bit different. For copy buffer, for moving averages, there is only one buffer, but my fractals are going to come from two different buffers. So I have two copy buffer statements, both using handle fractal, but the first uses upper line and the second uses lower line. And these are built into MetaTrader as constants. So they will give the fractal from the upper and from the lower. The rest of these arguments are the same. I'm beginning at bar number zero for copy bars and I'm putting the data into indicator buffer. But then the fractal high is just indicator buffer fractal bar and the fractal low is indicator buffer fractal bar. No need to change the double close. The I close function stays the same. Now moving down to the logic for opening a trade, most of this doesn't change. The only difference will be the open trade because I'm no longer returning this current ticket number. So I'm going to be converting that to a void function. And then the same for the short position, no longer a current ticket. The new bar function doesn't change. Check inputs function doesn't change. The open trade function is now going to be void because I'm not returning a ticket. And this line ticket equals order send, that's going to change. So instead of this int ticket equals order send, I'm using the trade object from earlier, trade.position open, chart symbol, type, which is this order type passed in, volume, price, stop loss, take profit, and the trade comment. And you'll notice there is no magic number here because we set that earlier. And that simply replaces this line. And then this is now void, so I'm not returning ticket. I'm just going to return. Check that. And those are the changes to convert to MetaTrader 5. And just to cover that again, the main differences are that indicators now have handles. So I need to set up the indicators in the beginning with the handles. And then of course, remove those indicators when I'm finished with the code. And that I'm now using trade.position open instead of order send. Hope this has been useful. Please click the like button, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we release new videos. And until next time, thank you for watching.